Alright, this video we're going to uh, have a look at the half angle identities. Uh, we have the half angle identities for uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. Alright, so you can see that the half angle identities for sine and cosine are similar. The only difference is, is the, uh, the sine in between 1 and cosine A. And then we have two different identities for tangent and it doesn't matter which one you use, you can use either one you want. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started and uh, work an example. I'm going to have a couple examples I'm going to do with these half angle identities and I'm going to work one problem per video so I'll have a couple of videos with this. Alright, so the first example we have here, if cosine A is 3 fifths and angle A, okay, angle A is between 270 and 360, so what does that mean? Well, that means we're in the fourth quadrant. Alright, and they want us to find sine of A over 2, cosine of A over 2, and tangent A over 2. Alright, so the, the first thing we want to do is let's just go ahead and write our formulas down. So I've got sine of a over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine a over 2 and cosine a over 2 is plus, oh, how about I put an equal sign there, equals plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine a over 2. And then for tangent, uh, well, let's just write down one of them. So tangent a over 2 is equal to, let's just do the 1 minus cosine a over sine a. Alright, so for the uh, the sine and cosine formula, I need, I need cosine a. Well, they give us cosine a, so all I have to do is just plug the three-fifths in, okay? And tangent a over 2, I have to have cosine a and sine a, but all they give me is cosine a. But let's think about this, okay? Do I really need to find sine a? Well, not really, because I know that tangent of a over 2 is sine of a over 2 divided by cosine a over 2 because don't we have a formula that says tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta okay so I know that tangent is sine over cosine so once I find sine of a over 2 and cosine of a over 2 I can just use this identity here to get tangent a over 2 so I don't even need the, t the half angle identity for tangent because I'm because I'm just going to use this okay so let's erase this and give us some room alright so the next thing you notice in the formulas it's plus or minus plus or minus well how do I know which one to use well I have that A is between 270 and 360 degrees. Okay, that's in the fourth quadrant. Well, I'm looking for sine and cosine of A over 2. I need my angle to be A over 2. Well, if I divide this by 2, then I have to also divide all of this by 2. So that's going to give me that A over 2 is between 135 degrees and 180 degrees. So that means that angle A over 2 this angle here, A over 2, is in the second quadrant. Well, if I'm in the second quadrant, I know 
that sign is positive so I don't need the plus or minus I know this is going to be positive and then if I'm in the second quadrant I know cosine is negative so I don't need the positive I know this answer is going to be negative because this angle is in the second quadrant okay all right all right so let's just plug this value in so I get sine of a over 2 is equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine a and cosine a is 3 fifths and that's all over 2. So now I need to simplify this. Okay. So to simplify this what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each term underneath the radical by 5. Okay. Remember, remember when you uh, in algebra when you simplified complex fractions, you would just take each term and multiply by the common denominator. So you can look at this as being one over one and two over one, and my common denominator of five, one, and one is five. So I multiply each term by five. So that's going to give me sine of a over two is equal to the square root of 5 minus, and then you see here the 5's cancel, 3 over 10. So the sine of a over 2 is equal to the square root of 2 over 10. Let me move this up some. And so sine a over 2 is the square root of 1 fifth. So the sine of a over 2 is equal to the square root of 1 over the square root of 5. And so sine a over 2 is equal to the square root of 1 is 1 over the square root of 5. And, you know, depending on what your teacher is going to make you do, I mean, they might let you leave it like this, but a lot of teachers might make you rationalize the denominator. Remember how to do that? Multiply by square root of 5 over square root of 5. And so that'll give us the square root of 5 over 5. And so this would be sine a over 2. Okay. All right. Now let's find cosine a over 2. So to find cosine a over 2, well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plug the three-fifths in for cosine a over 2. So I get cosine a over 2 is equal to negative square root of 1 plus three-fifths over 2. Okay. And then the same thing, I'm going to, this is over 1, this is over 1, common denominator is 5, so I'm multiplying each term by the common denominator. And so that's going to give me cosine a over 2 equals negative square root of 5 plus 3 over 10. So cosine of a over 2 is equal to negative square root of 8 over 10. So cosine a over 2 is negative oops, negative square root of 4 fifths and just reduce the fraction and so cosine a over 2 is negative square root of 4 over square root of 5 and so cosine a over 2 is equal to negative 2 over square root of 5. 
And once again, we can rationalize denominator. And so that gives me 2 square root of 5 over, whoop, I'm sorry. How about negative 2 square root of 5 over 5? And so here's my answer for cosine a over 2. Now, I need to find tangent a over 2. Well, tangent a over 2 is equal to sine a over 2 over cosine a over 2. Now, we got for sine a over 2, we got square root of 5 over 5, and for cosine a over 2, we got negative 2 square root of 5 over 5. And we can plug these values in, okay? But what we can also do, instead of plugging these in where we rationalize denominator, we could also plug these in. And what that might what that might do is make the arithmetic a little bit easier. Okay? We won't have to simplify so much. So let and and a lot of times that's the case. It's easier to plug in the values before you rationalize the denominator. Okay? All right. Because I mean, I mean this 1 over square root of 5 is the same thing as square root of 5 over 5. You can plug it into your calculator and you'll get the same thing. And same thing here. This is the same as this. Alright, so I'm going to plug in the values before our rationalized denominator. So that's going to be 1 over square root of 5 over negative 2 over square root of 5, which is 1 over square root of 5 divided by this. Okay, so we could write 1 over 1 over square root of 5 times the reciprocal of this. So times negative square root of 5 over 2. And then you can see here the square root of 5's cancel and so I'm left with negative 1 half is tangent a over 2. All right, so I hope this video's helped. Uh, and if you like them, you can watch my other videos and you can subscribe. All right, thanks.